Hello everyone, so today I'm here with another OpenGL video tutorial series. So this time I'm going to work with C Sharp. And so C Sharp has grown as a very popular programming language recently and uh, many people prefer C Sharp over many other programming languages. So um, you might have heard that uh, there is no official support for OpenGL and C Sharp. Um, but there are other li uh, other bindings and libraries uh, which will help you to use OpenGL through C Sharp. So uh, there are actually three of them which, uh, which are SharpGL, the Tau framework and the Open Toolkit library. So uh, many people are still confused that if these are uh, up to the mark to create a, uh, create a good video game. So I myself tried all three of them and uh, I've came on the conclusion that the Open Toolkit library is quite versatile that will help you to uh, create video games using OpenGL uh, and C Sharp. Uh, so it also has support for OpenAL which is the open audio library and uh, which will help you to um, work with audio in your game. And so you first need to download the Open Toolkit library and you also need the .NET Framework 4.0 uh, or 3.5 and above will work. Uh, and you also need to have an IDE or if you're using a command line, uh, you will need to sort out some stuff on Google that how to use the open toolkit library through command line because I'm not going to show that here. And so you download it from the sourceforge.net. Uh, I'll leave this link down in the description. Um, you go to this website and there is a download button and you download this from sourceforge. Uh, so I've al already downloaded my copy. Here it is. And you now need to install this. Um, so the default installation path will be in your documents folder and uh, So you install both the code library and the source code um, That's up to you. So now you wait for it to get installed And so it'll be by default installed in the documents directory and So here will be a folder. Uh, it's being installed right here open TK and so once it is finished installing, you do not need to do uh, any further environment setup. And this is all. Uh, you just need to know the directory where it, it has been installed. So there is the OpenTK folder. And we've done with this. And so you go into the OpenTK folder, the uh, version, the binaries, OpenTK, release, and there are some DLLs which we need to use. Um, so you remember this directory. So this will be used uh, when we start creating your application so this was all for the environment setup and now we can start coding and so the IDE you might be using uh, you'll be using might be uh, different from the one I use here and so here I'm using sharp develop um, uh, you can use Visual Studio or any other IDE you like um, and the steps uh, uh, and the things that I'll do here in this IDE um, will be quite similar to any other um, if you still have conflicts you can always use Google to uh, see how to work that out and if you're using com command line compiling you can also see that on Google that how to compile the open TK using the command line uh, and so um, we'll start by creating a new project and so we need to create the console application so the requirements for the references that is uh, enough which is given by console application we don't, do not need a winform or wpf application because the window created by OpenTK is of its own not of any other uh, api so we'll need the uh, we need to name something give it a name and we'll create the project and um, here's our template code so the references uh, in the project which we have currently you can see them from here um, I'll first make it full screen and so the references it'll have here but we do not have a reference currently to the OpenTK library so we need to uh, use the OpenTK library so we need to add a reference to that so if you're using any the IDE you can always google that how to add a reference but as far as I know that uh, the steps will not be much different you, you will always figure a way out by yourself so you add a reference uh, here in the um, sharp develop you go to project add reference and you need to browse to your DLL so we'll browse to it using here dotnet assembly browser in sharp uh, develop so you need to develop uh, browse to the open the directory I just showed you uh, but um, 
I'll show you again that in the OpenTK folder where it has been installed, you go to this the version folder, the binaries folder, OpenTK release, and there is there are the DLLs. So we need to open the OpenTK.dll to add the reference to it. So it has been included here, and we click OK, and there is a reference to OpenTK library. And now we can add a using statement for OpenTK to uh, use the stuff which is present inside this library. So the first thing that we'll use is the window class, the game window class, which will help us to create a window. So we'll create an object of the game window class inside our main function. Um, so we'll name it window. So we'll call the constructor. So the constructor actually has eight overloads. That's a lot. Um, but the one we're going to use here will take two arguments. Um, and the, both of them will uh, specify the size of the window in the format width comma height so the two arguments um, being the width and the height respectively so we'll create a square window of 500 into 500 pixels so this will create the window but the window will not display yet uh, we need to call the member function which will be window dot run uh, which starts the loop in the window and the window is displayed onto the screen and this also the run function also has three overloads actually um, the one we're going to use will take an argument which will be the update rate of the window so the update rate is taken in in the double format the double precision floating point um, so if we need 60 updates per second in one second um, so we need the time in seconds after which the window has to be updated will be 1 over 60 seconds so, so this will be the update rate 1.0 divided by 60 and so this will display the window on the screen so you can check by run building and running the project that if the window is being displayed so here is our window and by default it will be empty and white colored uh, because we have not drawn yet anything on the window neither we have specified the clear color of the window so now to draw stuff and manipulate the window uh, we uh, it'll, it'll be convenient to use it a separate class. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll create a class, um, a C sharp class, and we'll name it game dot cs. And so um, the constructor. Uh, so we'll first add the includes. So uh, we'll also add the using statement of open tk here. So we are now using OpenTK, so we can also create do stuff here. So this class, what this class will actually do, do that, that it'll take the the constructor will take a game window argument, the object of the game window class, as an argument, um, and uh, we'll use to will manipulate this variable. So the main fun uh, this program class will not anymore take care of this window. So the control we it can be controlled now from the game class so it'll take an argument window so we also need a public variable window public or just no do not specify any access modifier or you can actually um, I'll just create game window window so we've created a variable we have not uh, yet called the constructor because we want to set this equal to the argument which is passed into the constructor of this class so we'll use this pointer to point to this member this dot oh i'm sorry uh, this dot window is equal to the window the argument which has been passed into it and now we're uh, currently calling the run function from here the main function um, but um, we'll not do it from here actually now uh, after it has been passed to the game class uh, another function named start will be called we'll first declare it um, so this function will actually run the window so this will be called by the constructor so just to make it simple I'm putting this stuff all the stuff in the other function so this will run the window actually so now we'll create an object for the game class too um, we'll call the constructor and we'll pass the window 
into that and now we can build and run to check uh, the bugs in the code so I think this should be oh I did not use the new keyword uh, and now we can check if there are any bugs in the code and so this is working fine so our class is working and now we can start drawing stuff and uh, first thing we need to do is uh, set the background of the window um, so that'll be the first thing we'll do um, that'll give you the basic idea how OpenGL is going to work so before we start working with OpenGL we need to include it so opentk.graphics.opengl here it is so we can now use, the op um, o use OpenGL using the GL class so it has member function which will enable uh, help us to use OpenGL and so um, in the start function will also re register some OpenGL event handlers. So first we'll uh, set the events for the window. So first will be the load event. So when the window is loaded, some stuff will be initialized. So we'll use that event to initialize the default background clear color for the window, the OpenGL uh, clear color, which is the clear color is actually an OpenGL state variable. I'll explain this in a while. So we'll first um, uh, declare the event handler. So window dot load so this will be called when the window is first loaded on uh, the event name of the event loaded and now we'll declare the function down here and if you know c sharp um, you will be familiar how to declare an event handler and so this event handler will first set the clear color so the clear color is a state variable of opengl so a state variable uh, is like this the clear color which is set using this function in the opengl uh, so uh, you once you set the value of the state variable uh, so it is not uh, it remains the same until you yourself change it so I set the color default clear color background clear color here so every time you clear the background of the window it will be cleared to the color I've set through here I've set here and uh, until I next time change it myself so this is called a state variable in OpenGL there are a lot actually but here we'll start with the clear color so the clear color state variable is set using the member function of the GL class which is clear color itself so this function sets a clear color of the window um, so there are three overloads for that so the one I'm going to use here takes four floating point arguments um, which is red and intensity of the colors red green and blue and the fourth one is the alpha value which we will not worry about here we'll just keep it zero here and so the first three arguments are the RGB you might have heard about this format uh, the three arguments which specify the intensity of the three colors um, using floating point values over zero being the lowest value and one being the highest so if you set uh, all the three colors to the zero value means the lowest intensity of all the three um, the none intensity I mean no intensity of the three colors so this will result in a black color so we'll keep the alpha value zero uh, because we will not worry about this here I'll explain it later so the value uh, amount of red zero amount of green zero and amount of blue zero and alpha value zero so this will re re result in a black background color but this will not clear the window automatically we've just set the state variable we have not cleared the window to its default clear color yet so the, this will be all our loaded event handler will do and now to uh, work with frames so we'll declare another event handler which will be called uh, every time a frame is to be displayed so um, we'll declare the event handler which is uh, the event is actually called uh, render frame so we'll name the um, event handler for that we'll call it render f and we'll declare the function down here Uh, and so uh, this function will take care when the frame is to be displayed and so um, for each frame we'll clear the f um, screen to the default background color first of all before we draw any of the stuff we'll first clear the screen to its default background so for that we use the function gl clear 
So this function takes an argument which uh, is the clear buffer mask. So this specifies that what thing we need to clear. So there are actually um, uh, many buffers. So the one which stores the pixels which are displayed on the screen is called the frame buffer. So we need if we clear the frame buffer to the default color, the frame buffer the frame will be black in color. So we clear the frame buffer first of all to the default clear color which we have set. So to uh, to specify that we want to clear the frame buffer, we'll pass the argument um, uh, clear buffer mask dot color buffer bit. So the color buffer bit is actually the frame buffer. And there are also other buffers like the stencil buffer, um, the uh, depth buffer and others. But here we will only give one argument which will be the frame buffer. So we need to clear the frame buffer. So after this the frame buffer will be cleared. But still the color of window will be white because uh, the buffer which we just cleared is not being displayed at this time. This is because uh, here OpenGL is using double buffered mode. So what the double buffered mode is that there are actually two frame buffers, two frames that are in action at one time. So one frame is being displayed at a time on the screen while the other is being drawn. So we clear the frame buffer. Uh, this takes effect on the frame that is being drawn, not the frame that is being displayed. So uh, we once we finished our drawing stuff so at the end of this render f function what we'll first clear it uh, the screen to default at in the render f function what we'll do we'll clear the screen to default we'll draw stuff and at the end we'll swap the buffers the buffers that is the buffer that is being drawn will be swept with the buffer that is being displayed and now the buffer that was being displayed will be used to draw now and the buffer that was earlier being drawn will be displayed so this will uh, take effect and every time a frame is drawn and at the end the buffer is displayed so this leads to the animation so animation is basically redraw plus swap so we've now cleared the buffer uh, sorry we've now cleared the frame buffer um, now we'll we know that we need to swap the buffers so uh, we do that to swap the buffer of the window we call the function swap buffer simple so we call this function and the buffers will be swapped and so the uh, black colored frame will be displayed and each time the render of this event is called uh, the screen will be set to black color and the drawing on the stuff uh, will be drawn inside this function or the other function which are called between the before the command to swap buffer so any function which is called from here and that draws something onto the screen will take effect and so uh, we'll run a program to check if there are any bugs and see if we get the desired output. And so I am getting errors here. Um, so let's have a look at what those are. Okay, it cannot convert from... Oh, okay, yeah, I found it out. Uh, what problem is here? Um, well, first switch back to the full screen mode. And so uh, it says that these values should be float. This is actually the double data type. So we it takes only the floating point argument. So we'll use the postfix f at the end of each value so that um, it it is converted into the float floating single precision floating point. Um, and so uh, this should work now. Uh, and yes, we do get our desired output a black colored window. So we have not yet drawn any geometry to the screen uh, and uh, before drawing we also need to set the projection and stuff so um, we'll, we'll talk about that in the next part and uh, if this video was helpful please drop a like um, and subscribe to my channel if you want to support me and um, so this was all for this video and I'll see you next time.